This tute's going to talk about Z scores, which are sometimes called standardized scores because what we use them for is comparing two different observations from two different data sets. So if things are from two different data sets, there's no way to compare apples and oranges until you make them have some common language. So we standardize them, we make them have something in common with each other, which is a Z score, so that then we can uh, make some judgment about how they relate to each other. And this is the way it works. What a z-score represents is how far either side of a mean a particular observed value, a particular result in that data set actually is. So here's this bell curve that we, we have been using in the last tute when we were talking about the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And remember we had, oh, that is not a straight line, but we had our mean in the middle here. And then we counted down either side. We went one standard deviation down this way, two standard deviations down this way, and three standard deviations down, and we went up one, up two, and up three. And we used the information about those intervals to calculate 65% of the data, 95% of the data, and so on. Z scores sort of correlate to this. What a Z score of zero means is that the data value that you're talking about fell exactly on the mean. A Z score of one, so positive one, means that your data value that you're looking at fell one standard deviation above the mean. A Z score of positive two means you were two standard deviations up and a Z score of positive three means you were three standard deviations up and it works the same going down. A negative one Z score means you were below the mean, but you were one standard deviation exactly below the mean. A negative two Z score means you were two standard deviations below the mean. And a negative three Z score means you were three below. So say for example, you got you, your, the distribution has a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of two. So let's say you got a uh, a test score of 46. So that's the, the observed value that we're looking at. Within this distribution, that 46 is actually quite significantly higher than the mean of everyone else in that data set. So here's 40 at our mean here. We go one standard deviation up, we get to 42. Two standard deviations up, we get to 44. And three standard deviations up, we get to 46. So the Z score for 46 would be positive three. And that's a great Z score because it means you did significantly better than just about everyone else in the group. In fact, it means you were in uh, the highest percentage right up here. So what 46 represents, just on its own, you can't really tell too much about it. But when you compare it to the rest using mean and standard deviation, then you can get some useful information out of it. So a Z score of three is right up here. In this case, say you had uh, an observed score of 38, what would the Z score be? Well, 38 is one standard deviation below that mean. So the Z score for 38 would be negative one. So how do you work out a Z score? On this example, it's really obvious because you know we're only counting to either side of 40. So that's some easy maths to do in your head. But if you had more complicated numbers, you need a formula. And this is what it looks like. The formula is the standard score, which is the Z score, is equal to the observed value, so you might call that X, minus the mean, which we draw like this, X with a little bar, divided by the standard deviation, so all over S. So this is what it looks like in mathematical notation, and this is what it looks like in words doesn't matter which one you use, they both work the same way. The Z score, the standard score, is equal to the observed value, so which point in that data set you're actually you know, trying to get some information about, minus the mean of the data set, divided by the standard deviation of that data set. So let's put that into practice. The typical example that most of the textbooks use is when you're comparing test scores across two different subjects. Let's say you got a score of 75 in English, and you got a score of 62 in maths. 
Now at face value, which one of those did you do better in? It looks like you did better in English because the score is higher. 75 is higher than 72, 62 rather. But who's to say that the test wasn't a heck of a lot harder in maths? What if this one was really difficult and compared to everyone else in the class, you actually did really well? We can't tell just by looking at those two observed data values. What we need is some more information about the overall set that they form a part of. So let's say for English, the mean is 70 and the standard deviation is 5. And let's say for maths that you have a mean of 56 and a standard deviation of 3. Now we can use this formula of Z scores to figure out which subject you actually did better in. So we're trying to find Z. For English, our Z value is the observed value, which is 75, what we actually got, minus the mean, which the mean of this one is 70, divided by the standard deviation, which in this case is 5. So if you work that out, you end up with 5 over 5, which is 1. So you have a standard Z score of 1, which means you're exactly one standard deviation above the mean. Now for this one, let's work out the Z score. Z is equal to the observed value, which in this case is 62, minus the mean, which in this case is 56, divided by the standard deviation, which is 3. So when you work that out, you get 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So this test result is exactly two standard deviations above the mean. So now I ask again, which of these two scores was better? Because this was actually higher above the mean than this one was, they were both above average. So you're a smart cookie. You're doing quite well in, these, in both of these tests. You're doing better than the average of the class. But in this one, you did even better. So maths is actually a better score. Something to watch out for is that high Z scores are not necessarily best. It's just our method of comparison. In some cases, a lower Z score is better. And I'll show you what I mean. Say you got a golf score of 110 on an 18 par golf course one day, and then another day you got 135, for example. At first glance, and remembering golf scores, a lower score is better because it means you took less strokes or whatever it is to play the to play the round. I'm not really a golf person. At first glance, this one is a better score because it's lower. But who's to say that on a windy day, this might have actually been one of the best scores on the course according to who was playing? So what you would need to do is work out from the mean and the standard deviation of both of these data sets, which had a lower Z score. Another example of data where a lower Z score is better is the time taken to do something. So if you're measuring a race, something like that, and someone takes 90 seconds to complete it and someone takes 75 seconds to complete it, then which one has done better? Well, it depends on the other people in the race, but generally you're going to want a lower Z score because less time taken being, you know, here's our average, here's our mean right here in the middle. Do you want to be higher than the average? Do you want to have taken more time than the average or less time than the average to complete a race? You want to be faster than everyone else, which means less time. So for example, a you know, negative 1.2 Z score might be really great. And this is the other thing to watch out for. It's really nice when a Z score is a nice round number, like positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, because it falls perfectly within that range of one standard deviation away, two standard deviations away, three standard deviations away. But most of the time, it'll actually be some sort of uh, decimal number, some sort of fraction of one of those things. So let's just do an example. Say um, you're taking an exam and in semester one, the uh, class average, the mean was 62 and the standard deviation was 12. And in semester one, you scored 57. And then in semester two, the class average, the mean was 55 and the standard deviation was 14 
and you scored, in fact, let's say you scored 57 in both semesters, and which semester did you do better in? So, what we do to work this out is we use this formula. So for semester one, our notation looks like this. The Z score is equal to the X, which in this case is 57, which is this one here, so it's 57, minus the mean of X, which in this instance for semester one is 62, all divided by the standard deviation, which is 12. And that works out to be negative 0.42. So that's the Z score for semester one. What about for semester two? Okay, so we do X minus the mean of X divided by the standard deviation. So Z equals X. Now our observed value for semester two is also 57. And minus the mean of X, this time it's 55. All divided by the standard deviation, this time it's 14. And that works out to positive 0 0.14. So now you can compare them because you're comparing apples with apples. Here you've got a Z score that's negative, so it's less than the mean, although it's still less than one standard deviation away because it's between 0 and negative 1. And here you've got a Z score that's positive, so it's higher than the average, it's higher than the mean, but it's still between one standard deviation, between zero and one standard deviation above. So this person's pretty close to the mean in both semesters. And that's how it works. And this is how it might appear on an exam. This is a real question that appeared on the 2007 exam one, so the multiple choice exam. And this is what it says. A student obtains a mark of 56 on a test for which the mean mark is 67, that's the mean, and the standard deviation is 10.2. The student's standardized mark, standard Z score, is closest to. So you just apply that formula. Z equals X, so the observed value, minus the mean of X, the mean of the data set, divided by the standard deviation of that data set. So in this case, our observed value, our x, is 56, our mean is 67, and our standard deviation is 10.2. So you just plot that into your calculator and you get negative 1.08. There you have it. The answer is A, and that's Z scores.